Picking up right where we left off in the last video, everything is now in place to create your cluster. This can be done either in the GUI or PowerShell. The GUI way is slower, and unless you are using a GUI installation of Windows Server to host virtual machines, you can't run it right from a host. We'll start with that method on the same remote server we use for validation. Back at the home page of Failover Cluster Manager, click Create Cluster. The beginning of this wizard looks a lot like the beginning of the validation wizard. We enter the node names here and click Next. If it can't find a validation report, it would have asked if we wanted to run validation. Since we've got a good validation report already, we're brought directly to this screen. Had you chosen to create the cluster right from the end of the validation wizard, this is the screen you would start with. Here, we are asked to provide the name of the cluster. This will become an Active Directory computer account and it will be created in the same organizational unit that the nodes are in. Make sure that your user account has permissions to create a computer object there. You could also create a computer account in advance. That account can be anywhere in the directory, but you will likely run into problems if it's not with the nodes. If you do create the account in advance, disable it before going through this wizard. We'll also provide the IP address for the cluster's computer name to use. This must be separate from any other IPs in use, but must be on the network that we intend to use for management. In this grid view, what we see are discovered networks common to all nodes. Let's find the management network and give it a unique IP and click Next. Notice the checkbox next to Add Eligible Storage to the Cluster. If you clear this, you'll need to manually add cluster disks. That's not a difficult process, so the choice is up to you. I'll leave it selected here and click Next. When it's done, you get a summary screen. The View Report link will open a report that's created in the Windows Cluster Reports folder on all the nodes, just like validation reports. Of course, this can all be done in PowerShell and much more quickly. The nice part about PowerShell is that it can be done locally on a node running Hyper-V server. Here's what that looks like. We've already got a cluster, so submitting this commandlet would fail. However, this perfectly duplicates what we did in the GUI. There are also a couple of other parameters. No storage prevents disks from automatically being brought into the cluster, like the checkbox on the second to last GUI screen. The ignore network is like unchecking a network box on the screen where we set the IP. That would only be necessary if we had multiple adapters with gateways. Now that the cluster is created, we need to turn our attention to Quorum. If you have an odd number of nodes, you could just use node majority, although using a witness disk is still recommended. The fastest way to check is in PowerShell. This cluster has an even number of nodes, and we allowed it to automatically add clustered disks, so it's in node and disk majority. The purpose of Quorum is to determine how to handle node failures. If any given node cannot contact enough other nodes to constitute a majority, it shuts down its highly available guests and exits the cluster. This ensures that only one node is ever running any given resource. Because we have an even number of nodes, we need a tiebreaker. In this case, we use a cluster disk as indicated here. If you look on the disk section under storage, you can see the quorum disk. To make identification and other contacts easier, you can rename the quorum disk. This disk was automatically selected. Sometimes the cluster picks the wrong disk, so you'll need to override. Of course, you can always manually configure quorum anyway. Right-click the cluster, go to More Actions, and click Configure Cluster Quorum Settings. Click Next. If you select the option for default, it will rescan your environment and make the decision on its own. If it selected the wrong disk, or you want to use a remote file share for a witness instead of a disk, or if you want to try to work with node majority, just choose the middle option. You can see the available options here. The share witness is really only intended for a geographically distributed cluster, so use disk majority if you can. This screen allows us to choose which disk. If you want to get more involved with Quorum, the advanced section lets you also choose which nodes count toward Quorum, known as a vote. This is of most use in a geo cluster as you can indicate that nodes in a remote site have no vote to ensure that your primary site is favored in the event that remote connectivity is lost. This can all be set using PowerShell, of course. The related commandlet is set cluster quorum. Since quorum adjustments aren't something you'll do often, using the GUI is generally preferred. You can research this commandlet using the help system if you're interested. Your cluster is created and is mostly ready to start running virtual machines. We still need to cover some more topics about storage, which will be the focus of the next section.
We still have one more video in this section though, and that's going to be about adding nodes and storage to an existing cluster.